Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to go over how to deploy Django using the DigitalOcean app platform. So this will probably be the easiest deployment we've done so far. Um, this will allow us to kind of automate a lot of the steps and just make it super simple to get up and running. So first, we're going to go ahead and just do a simple deployment, and then we'll come back and we'll add some more features, a better database and environment variables and other things to kind of make it a more production deployment. Um, but let's go to get started with just the first basic deployment to get, uh, first. So I'll go ahead and create an account with DigitalOcean. I'll go through all that setup. And then go to the apps page. And once you get to the apps page here, um, you'll probably have nothing here. Um, I have one already created, but go ahead and just create a new app, however that button looks for you. And then you'll come to this page here to, have to select the resource for the source code. Uh, I'm going to use GitHub, and, that, and you'll find the link to the repository we'll use in this tutorial in the description. Feel free to clone that and use that as well, or use your own project. Um, but we're going to go ahead and select that right here. Now, real quick, let's open up that source code and take a look at it. So you'll see here at the root of the files we just have, or the root of the project, we just have all of our files here. Um, sometimes I have them split up where we have like a folder with all this stuff and the requirements. Uh, don't do that for this. It'd be much easier to keep it all together. Just move the requirements inside that main folder and you should be good to go. Um, and then looking in our blog tutorial, our settings.py. I changed the allowed host right now to be a star just to allow everything, just to make this deployment a little easier. We'll come back and we'll change that later. Um, and then from there, we'll keep the SQL Light 3 um, database for now. Come back, we'll change that later. Uh, but make sure at the very bottom that you have a static URL and a static root. So import OS, OS the path that join, baster, and static files. And we'll use this later on to, to serve our static files. So make sure those are in there as well. With that done though, this should be ready to go. So with there, we'll go ahead and um, keep it master branch, keep it at the just the root. Make sure autoplay is checked and click next. And now you'll see here, we can um, edit our resources. So first we'll edit the plan. And by default, um, it gives you this, this more um, advanced plan um, for production. But for a basic prototype, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and just put it at the lowest setting for this example. Um, but you can see here, all of your options if you wanna go in and look at them all. But the very basic one will work just for, the, just for this tutorial. Um, now once you have that changed, go ahead and click edit next to your web service component right here. And if you want to go ahead and change the name or whatever else, you can change that here. Um, by default, it should have already recognized that this is a Python project. That should already be set up for you. So that should be good. Um, now we do need to change our run command though. We want to make sure we reference our um, WSGI file. So inside of our settings.py, um, we'll have the... Um, right here, WSGI application, blog tutorial WSGI. So we wanna make sure we have a reference to this inside of that run command. So at the very end of this, we'll leave all that the same. And we'll put a space and I, my example here is blog tutorial WSGI. And we'll save that. Um, and that's all we should need to change from there. The rest should be good, we'll go back. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just click next. And we'll go next, pass environment variables. And then we'll get to the info here. If you want to change the name, you want to change anything else here, go ahead. You can change the region if you want. Um, for me, this is the closest one to me, so I'll keep it like that for now. And then I'll go ahead and click next. And I can review everything, make sure it all looks good. And then you'll get a kind of a estimate of your cost down here. Let's go ahead and click create resources. Now this will take a few minutes to actually build and deploy. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to when this is done. But if you click on the build logs, this will give you um, access to what's going on. If there's any errors, they'll show up in here. So that's a good place to start if you have any problems. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to when this is finished. Okay, there we go. And we got the successful deployment. Um, one thing I did forget to mention that I should probably mention real quick is make sure inside of your requirements.txt, you have a reference to Unicorn in here. So make sure you put Unicorn in there. Otherwise, you may have an issue saying that it failed to find that module. Um, so make sure you have that there so it actually installs Unicorn as well. Um, but mine succeeded. If you have any issues, go ahead and look through the errors here and try to work through what that might be. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you the best I can. Um, but that should um, tell you what you need to fix if there's anything to, to fix. Um, now that's done, um, you can either click on the link here or on the live app link here. And a new tab here opens up our new tab. Now, this all is great, but if we were to go to slash admin, you'll see we lost our styles. That's because by default, Django doesn't host the, the static files. We have to do that ourselves. 
So we need to go back and change one thing so we can host those static files and actually get our CSS for our admin page. So up here, we have this create button. Click on it, we can create resources from source code. Um, we'll click the same GitHub repository as we did before. Um, we'll keep the same settings here and we'll click next. Next, we'll go ahead and edit our web service component. We're gonna change the resource type. So next to resource type, click edit, change web service to um, static site and save that. I'll change the settings here. Um, we'll see here our output directory. We're gonna edit that as well. And this will be the output to um, the uh, directory that matches the static root setting in our settings.py. So we look at that, we go to the, our blog tutorial, settings.py, and we look for our static root. We call it static files. So we wanna make sure we, and this, for my example at least, if yours is different, you may need this may need, be, may need to be different, but in my example here, this should say static files. We'll save that. And then our HTTP request routes, we'll edit that. And we want to change this um, to match our static URL. So our static URL is just slash static. Or, um, as we can do slash static here and save that. Now with our output directory changed and our request routes section added the static route, we should now be able to serve the static files. Um, so now we'll go ahead and click back and we will click um, next, next, and look here. Um, and there we go. So our total is $0. So it's no more than what we already have added for our web servers and click next and let that build. And once again, we need to wait for this to finish. Click on the build logs here to see what's going on. And I'll skip ahead to when this is done. Okay, now we have our deployment successful. Let's go ahead and click on the live app. Let's go back to our slash admin. And there we go. Now we have our static file showing. So I log in. We can double check that if we go into our articles uh, model, click on an article. We do get our rich text editor. Everything's working like it should. So now we should be able to use this app as is. But there's lots of things here we could change to make it better. Um, so let's go ahead and work through those things now. Now, to be able to do this, what we'll need to do is we'll need to update our code in our settings.py file. So I'm gonna do this right here just to make it easy um, for this tutorial. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use environment variables to set a lot of these values. So we'll work from top bottom and we'll make changes that we need to. So the first thing we'll need to change is a secret key. So this Django has a secret key, it's not secure and you need to change it for production. So we're gonna use um, our uh, environment variables for that. So down here, I have my I have my uh, import OS. I'll move this to the top of the file so I can use this in more than one spot. So I'll this all the way up here, or below our path, I'll use it right there. And the secret key, we'll get it from the environment variable. So we'll do s.get env, and we'll do um, Django secret key. And then we'll do get random secret key as the default value like that. And for debug, we're also gonna get that from our environment variables. So we'll do an, we'll do an os.get env, and we're gonna get the variable debug and set it also to the default to false. And we'll do double equals true. We're checking if it's equal to true and setting that value there. Uh, next, we'll go into our allowed hosts, and this will be, instead of allowing all, we only want to allow our Django host that we'll set up here. So we'll do an os.get env once again, and we will set this value to be Django allowed hosts. And then we'll add in uh, 127.0.0.1 and local host. Well, and then we'll go ahead and do a dot split on the um, comma on that, just like that. Okay, so that's your list of all of our allowed hosts right there. Okay, looks good. Uh, next, we need to go ahead and change the database settings. Now, this is kind of a lot. And I'm going to copy this in from the Django documentation or the DigitalOcean documentation for deploying this on Django. That link will be in the description as well as a link to this code. So you can grab it there. Um, but pretty much we're just checking for another environment variable and we're setting our, our 
database engine to either be the SQLite 3 if we're in development mode or setting it to um, our database that we're setting in the database URL environment variable um, inside of our app so, or inside of the app platform. So I'm going to paste it over all this database code right here. Um, you can see here, read through what it's doing. I'm really just checking for this development mode, development mode uh, EMV variable, checking if it's true or false, and either setting it to be our default SQL 3, SQLite 3, or getting the uh, database URL from the um, environment variables. Okay, and that should be it. So now with those changes done, we should be ready to go ahead and set our environment variables to actually make these changes. So I'm going to go ahead now and just commit these changes. And that should create a new deployment for us. Okay, there it goes. We'll let that build finish. And it looks like we might have got an error. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. See what might have happened. Um, oh, I forgot to import that line. Okay, so real quick, I made one error. I forgot to import um, a few things up here at the top. Um, so we need to import OS. We're going to go ahead and import sys. We're going to import dj underscore database URL. We also want to go ahead and, and from up this here at the top. So from from Django .core .management .utils import get random secret key. Okay, we'll go ahead and commit those changes and rebuild our project. Okay, so it looks like we might have one more issue. I forgot to add a few things to my requirements.txt. So let's go ahead and make that update real quick. So we add a unicorn. Let's go add a few more things here. So we'll add um, DJ database URL, PSYCOPG2 for our database later on. And that should be good. DJ database URL. Unicorn Django's in there. Um, we should be good. Let's go ahead now and submit these changes. And that will rebuild our project here. Hopefully now we have everything we need to get this thing fixed. Okay, so now you'll see the build succeeded. We've got this deployment error. And we look at it, we can see that it's because our database URL environment variable is not defined. So that's okay. Um, now we can go ahead and set our environment variables and we should be able to make this app function now. So if we go to our settings, click on our Django app here. So down here, we click environment variables, click edit, and then we can go ahead and add our keys and values here. So we add a few different things. So first we'll do is the Django allowed post. So all we're doing here is we're setting those values that we set um, in our settings file. And this will be app underscore domain. And this is kind of a keyword coming from the app platform environment variable documentation. Um, there is this idea of app wide variables where there's environment variables you can, that are provided by the app platform, such as like an app URL or an app domain. Um, and so in this case, the app domain is what you want to put as our allowed host. And so we can add that with this dollar sign and curly braces and putting an app domain. And that will put the app domain as the allowed host. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and put our database URL. So we do a database URL, and we'll set this to be the name of the database. In our case, um, what we created our database earlier um, as the name of DB. Um, I don't want to leave it right now because I don't want to lose these settings, but um, whatever you set your name of your database to be, in my case, I put db dot underscore dot database underscore URL. Now we'll get the database URL for the, the database that we created on um, that Postgres database that we added on to our app. Next, we'll have our debug setting. This will be set uh, right now to be true. Next, we'll put in a secret key. And if you remember correctly, the way we set this up, was we either allowed um, to either generate a new one by default every single time, um, being this um, get, where was it? So I go back here, settings. I'm um, using this get random secret key. Um, you can either generate a new one every single time we launch the app using this default value, or we can grab one from the environment variables. Um, you can do either or. Um, if you want to do a, um, you want to generate your own, uh, you can use this uh, generate strong password generator, this thing that uh, they have in the Django documentation that's pretty useful for this, um, or in the, not in the Django documentation, but in the app platform documentation. 
Um, make sure it's at least 32 characters. We'll come here, we'll do 32 characters. And we can generate one here, generate, and we can copy this or whatever, um, it, you know, whatever you have there, and you can put it right in here. Of course, this is something you want to keep secret. I'm going to delete this app as soon as I post this video, so it won't matter. But uh, make sure you keep this value secret. And make sure for this Django secret key value, you checkbox encrypt. Because this is a secret value, you want to make sure we have this encrypted. So we can put, click that uh, checkbox there for that. Okay, now we'll go down here and we'll hit save on that. And we'll allow our build to rebuild here. And I'll skip ahead to when this is done. Oh, it looks like I might have an issue here. Um, no support for empty string. Um, did I mess up my database URL? What did I put for that? Let's go ahead and go back to my settings. Do my uh, look at my environment variables here. And it looks like it's not finding it. Um, let's double check my database. So looking at my. Oh, you know what? I don't think I got my database added. I must have skipped that step. Okay, so I must have skipped the step of actually adding the database. Let's go ahead and create that real quick. So up here, um, you can see under the create, we have this option to create such attached a database. Click on that. Um, here's where we can set the database and the default name is DB. So our environment variable should work here if we keep these settings as they are. Um, we'll go ahead and create and attach. Uh, but of course, this is not really a production database. You can upgrade that later. I'm using this link, but for this tutorial, we'll keep it like this for our prototype and we'll let that build and add that database to our project. Okay, and now you'll see here that we had our successful deployment. So now we can go back up here, click on the light app. And we're getting an error um, because we need to actually go ahead and make our migrations. Uh, now we have a new database. So we'll go into our console here and we can do an LS. You can see where we're at. Um, we're just in that kind of root of our file. Do a Python 3 manage.py make migrations. Blog. Okay, we'll go ahead and do migrate. There we go. And now we come back here, refresh the page, and now we get our app here. Now, of course, we have lost all our posts because we have a new database, but we can, we can create new ones if we wanted to. Um, we also can go ahead here and do a Python, Python 3, uh, manage, py, create, super user, because we want to go ahead and create a new super user that we can actually use um, to add, log into the um, admin page. So to create a new admin user, and we'll give it whatever. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a simple password here, but of course, make a stronger one in production. Um, but for this example, that should be fine. Go back here, I'll refresh the page. Now let's go to slash admin. We can log in with that user now. Click on articles. And now we can go ahead and create a new article here if we wanted to. Test. Test article. Um, click on article. Uh, admin. We'll add a like to it. And we'll save it. And we'll go back to view the site. And now we have our post here. And we click read more. And now it works just like it should be. So now everything's working um, like it was before. Okay, perfect. So that is our um, app and now it's uh, deployed and it's all working. So there were kind of some errors there we had to work through. It's easy to forget steps when you're working through this, but at the end of the, at the, end of the deployment, um, we should have three different components. Let's see here, settings right here. So we have our web service component. We have our static site component to host our static files and we actually have our database right here. So hopefully that was helpful in getting this up and running. Um, all the code will be in the description below, as well as links to the DigitalOcean tutorial and anything else there that might be useful for you. Uh, if you have any questions or run any issues, let me know. I'll try to help you. Um, there's lots of steps involved. So it's easy to forget things or run into issues along the way. Um, but that's really it. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.